here we'll start to look at opportunities in business and venture opportunities that present themselves, new business ideas, new business opportunities. But we'll talk about it in a sense from the context of the individual, from how one thinks about or worries about developing and identifying business opportunities and what they are. First thing you've got to remember is that individuals, and we touched on this a little bit in the past, but individuals have access to important, crucial information. Oftentimes, it's their own experience or their experience of others in their groups that they're involved with, their affiliate groups. They understand what other people are looking for. And they also understand how the current economic system, the current way that resources are distributed are being used, the current way technology is being used, has limitations. It's not working as effectively or as, or as well as it possibly could. Individuals have the capacity to see in their environment, in the markets, and what they do and how they work, where there are weaknesses or limitations. And each of us has a unique perspective on that. So each of us has the potential to express their voice, express their potential, express their way to impact the world, and do that based upon developing some sort of a business opportunity. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. Being able to utilize the information that's available, both in the current situation, the current environment, but also in one's past, one's experiences, what one's learned, what one's skilled at, their levels of expertise, and of course their interests as well. Being able to bring all of that together. So let's talk quickly about some of the things that we carry with us that gives us this opportunity, this potential to identify different kinds of opportunities. This is in addition to just sort of one's observations and experience, being able to observe and recognize. One important one to think about is the working memory in, that we carry around with us. Working memory is essentially all of those active thoughts or memories that one has at a particular point in time. You essentially load up your working memory. So if you have been working on your PC or you've been working on your smartphone and you've been working on some various kinds of apps and you've been playing with maybe some sort of a video game that challenges your thought process and you've been working on trying to do some online banking transactions and that's all in your working memory because you've just been doing that. And then you walk into a store, a Starbucks or something, and you realize that you have to leave this new virtual world which is so effective and so flashy and so fun and live in the real world for a minute and reach into your pocket see if you have three dollars if not you pull out an old credit card and you slap it on the table and all of this sort of thing and you were living in a kind of like the way people lived five or ten years ago whenever your mind your working memory is thinking about how one could live five or ten years from now those things come together <clears throat> and you have a aha moment where you say, boy, there's a way to do this better. There's a way to use some of these new technologies in a different way as I interact and buy my cup of coffee or my hot chocolate or whatever it is. The more things that one carries around in your working memory, that is other experiences that you've been doing that you're thinking about, and then when you engage a situation in the world, then new ideas pop into your head. <clears throat> That's what to think about when you think about working memory. If, you're, if you just woke up, you haven't been thinking about anything, and you go and do something, it's unlikely you're going to come up with some new opportunity or new idea. But if you just came away from lacrosse practice, for example, and, um, and you just had maybe a bump on the head, and then you see something that would be a cushion or would be an improvement the way they make the new cars or something like that, or electronics that help uh, keep people safe or recognize some issue, because you're thinking of something else in that working memory, you can identify and find a new way to put the pieces together in the world. And that's kind of what entrepreneurship is about. One thing I would add to that is when you get your teams together and you think about a team as an entrepreneurial team, you want to put people's, you want to fill out people's working memory with the latest sales numbers, the latest ideas, the latest technologies, some challenges that are happening within your business, what the employees are thinking, what the customers are saying, what the suppliers are saying. You put that all into working memory so within that mix in your team, you can come up with new ways to address or to solve the problem. 
This is how you think outside of the box, by filling up that working memory. In addition, you have your long-term memories to draw on, your experiences, things that you've seen in the past, books that you've read, stuff that you've learned in school. These are all packed into your longer-term memory so that you can draw on them to help make sense of your environment and the things that are occurring to you as you go. The first idea that pops into your head in the situations I was describing won't necessarily work. That's why we can process it with all the other skills and things that we've learned, the math that you've learned, the English that you've learned, history, sociology, social sciences, um, music, uh, performing arts, those kinds of things that you've learned about before, now you can process all of this other stuff that you and your colleagues are talking about when you're trying to solve the problem. You have available all of this information. And remember, it is the nexus of all of this knowledge and information you have interacting with the world at a particular point in time that gives you the opportunity to find a new idea, a new business opportunity. The last thing to think about is a notion called procedural memory which are the things that you just know how to do. If you've been working in a restaurant, say you have your family business, is a, you have a family business that's a restaurant, or the family business is some sort of a, um, uh, some uh, other sort of, uh, of, of business that you worked, you've worked in on since you were a kid, and you basically know how to do it without thinking, or any sort of art form, um, dancing, music, you essentially learn how to do things without having to think about them. Those are also skills that you bring to the table whenever you're thinking about how to do, how to develop a new business. You may learn to code a program or to know how to deal with, with the interfaces on, on, the, on technology very intuitively. Well, that might come into play as you're figuring out how to develop this product we talked about a few minutes ago in, in uh, Starbucks. This is how it should work. And you just kind of like write it down or capture what you do automatically and then turn that into a solution to the problem that you've identified. So you bring all of this to the table, each individual, but even better when you have a whole group of people with different experiences, different procedural memory, different long-term memory, different working memory, and you put all of that on the table at once, you have a tremendous amount of raw materials from which to solve a problem or identify a better way to do something and thus a better way to create a business that might indeed become successful going forward. This is how the right people come together and find the right jobs, or the right opportunities, the right way to do things, um, the right way to build a business. All right, you have each of you brings everyone brings this kind of unique position, perspective, and all of this information into their experiences. That's how you identify and capitalize on problems. In the next video, we'll talk about how the way even though there's such a wonderful opportunity with all of this information, there are also mental problems, mental heuristics or shortcuts that we do that can also get us into trouble. That's what we'll talk about next, how you make sure that when you're using all this information, it doesn't actually cause you problems, but rather is something that allows you to come up, come up with new things and new ideas rather than going the old way, which is what these mental shortcuts will do. We'll talk about that in the next video.